I'm back in our Rhino model now, and I want to talk a little bit about the model here as we start to calculate our shading factors for our project here. So um, let's re just remind, remind ourselves what our model looks like so far. So we had our we had our two thermal zones, one stacked on top of another, a simple you know simple box rectangle uh, massing, and then we had a bunch of windows that were applied. And, and when we built the windows, you know as we have to do for our Energy Plus and Honeybee model and everything else, the windows are in 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 plane with the wall surface itself. So we have a wall surface and we have a bunch of windows and the windows are right in plane with the wall, right? There's no thickness, there's no depth to anything here. So when it comes to shading, we have to figure out how are we going to take into account the fact that all of these things are actually in different places in in reality, right? The the window itself is actually probably like back here a little bit. The pane of glass is actually probably inset a little bit. Uh, in in most cases, not all cases, but in most cases, it's going to be uh, inset a little bit there. Um, and it's almost certainly not in plane with this outer surface. However, in order to host the windows and have them cut the zone geometry correctly, they have to be in plane with the wall. So we cannot have windows which are out of plane with the wall in order to make a valid Energy Plus Open Studio Honeybee Ladybug model. Right, we're, we're, we have to build it in this sort of simplified planar fashion. So we're going to have to come up with some solutions for, for um, modeling out the shading geometry in a way that's going to be accurate, um, even though our source geometry here is not going to be sort of, um, the, the windows are not physically in the right place. Right? So we've got to figure out how we're, going to, how we're going to sort of manage all that. So, okay, all right, so this is our geometry. Let's go ahead and start modeling some of this shading information. So let me bring up my grasshopper scene here again. Let me let me bring up my grasshopper scene. And so we've got our grasshopper scene definition we've been working with throughout this whole series. We are building our honeybee rooms on the left. That information is flowing through and adding a fresh air ventilation system in our last uh, couple series. We added some heating and cooling information, domestic hot water, uh, we set up all the natural airflow ventilation, configured the PHPP, and then output to the Excel document there. So we need to add some. We need to add a new section here for calculating our shading. We could put it just about anywhere. We could put it um, over here with the geometry. We could put it at the end after our ventilation here. Um, what would make the most sense? Let's put it. Let's put it over here with our geometry, huh? We'll do that. We'll we'll put it with the geometry. Um, we'll kind of keep all of our like systems stuff here together and then all of the like geometry stuff over here together so we'll kind of sort of do it that way i don't know you could put it wherever you want but i'm gonna i'm gonna sort of organize it in that fashion and how are we going to start modeling shading for our project here so i'm going to come up to my passive house tools ribbon and in passive house tools i'll come into o1 model and in o1 model i'll come down here to the was this the fourth section? And notice that we have a bunch of components here that we haven't talked about yet, but we have a bunch of components here that we're going to use to model our shading factors. And the first one that I want to touch on here, the very first one that we want to look at in this case is going to be this guy here, this calculate window shading reduction factors simple. Maybe we could have named that like PHPP. So this is the component you're going to use to calculate the old fashioned dimensional shading information. So if we want to fill in that lateral reveal and horizon shading and overhang shading, if we want to automatically calculate all that information and populate the PHPP in that manner, this is the component that we're going to use to do that. So this calculate window shading factors simple is going to be the first of the shading factor um, components that we're going to take a look at in this series. So let me grab that and drop that onto the canvas here. And let's zoom in and see what this component looks like. All right, so we have our shading factor simple. So what do we have here? We're going to take in honeybee rooms. We're going to kick out honeybee rooms. So just like so many other components, this component's going to take in honeybee rooms. It's going to do a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. It's going to add a bunch of information to those honeybee rooms and then pass the honeybee rooms along in the chain. So we're going to input our honeybee rooms and then output those same honeybee rooms, except modified with a bunch of new information. Notice also we have some other stuff that we have to input, a latitude. So we have to input some 
some location information about our project. Um, we have some some options here. Uh, a run it. It's a bool. You know, you turn it turn it on and turn it off because this component will take some time to calculate. So you want the ability to turn it off and and on. Um, some uh, settings in terms of the you know, how far away this component is going to look for shading objects. The default is 99 meters. I think beyond that, the numerical shading calculations in the PHPP are not going to be able to take any, into, into account anyway. So I don't think beyond 99 meters you'll um, have any effect, but you can play with that if you want. Obviously, it's going to speed up the calculation if you make it smaller. It's going to make it, um, you're going to capture more, more things in the scene if you make it bigger, that kind of thing. And then the last couple inputs here, window surrounds, envelope surfaces, and shading surfaces. So what do we have here? Window surrounds. And it's going to take a tree input. And what this is asking for is it's asking for a bunch of geometry that describe the surfaces around the window. So for calculating things like the lateral reveals, we want to input a bunch of surfaces that describe the, the, um, the side geometry around the window. So we'll talk about how we do that and what that is in, in a little bit, absolutely. So this component also asks for envelope surfaces, and it asks for all of the envelope geometry of the building, but note that it wants the geometry punched out. So it wants the geometry with a bunch of holes in it. In order to accurately calculate the shading, we want to punch out all the holes of the windows so we get like a little Swiss cheese geometry that shows just the, just the, the opaque surfaces. And then lastly, we have the ability to input any additional uh, shading surfaces, things like trees or a neighboring building or a roof overhang that's not part of the thermal zone, um, you know, any sort of additional shading surface that we want to input there. So, okay, so we have to input a whole bunch of information, and some of it is quite particular. So let's talk about how we can set up and configure this component here. So this component works best. Now, now you could, I should say, you can go off and create all of this yourself. That's totally fine. You can use native grasshopper tools. You can whoops, go grab the geometry from, from our Rhino model, um, and you could, you could sort of do that, right? I could come in here, and I could, I could build window surrounds, right? We could absolutely do that, and then we could like do something like this. Oops. I don't know, screen real estate here, uh, right? We could build window surrounds in that fashion and then input those as, as window surrounds, for sure. Oops. Oh boy. We could absolutely do that. Let's not do that by hand, though. That, that would be a lot of modeling. That's a lot of stuff in the model there. Anytime we change a window shape, we would have to change that geometry. That seems silly. So let's automate that process. Can we build these window surrounds? Can we generate the punched surfaces? Can we do that? sort of more automatically, and of course. So here in PassFiles Tools, if you go to 01 model, we actually have a component here called Create Window Reveals, and that's gonna do just what it sounds like. It's gonna take all your window geometry, it's gonna inset it um, some dimension, it's gonna create all the side, top, and bottom reveal geometry, uh, and we can see what that looks like if we drop that onto the canvas here. So what do we have here in this component? Well, this one's a little simpler. So notice this one is going to take in just the honeybee rooms. We don't actually have to give this much information at all. And then we kick out a whole bunch of additional information, honeybee rooms, a list of all the window names, a list of all the window surfaces, the window surrounds, and then the envelope surfaces with the windows already punched out of them. So this component works really well with this component. So these are sort of pairs. They kind of they kind of work together really well, and we can kind of rig them up together. So for instance, I could take the honeybee rooms and go to the honeybee rooms. I could take window surrounds, and go to window surrounds. I could take envelope surfaces punched and go to envelope surfaces punched. So we can sort of connect these guys together in a logical way here. So that's useful, right? These guys can work together pretty well. In order to get this to operate, all I need to do is take my rooms 
and feed my rooms into this uh, solver. This will go off and create a bunch of geometry. It'll push it over here. It's giving us a warning. It's going to say, please uh, input the latitude. Right, we haven't filled in we haven't filled in all the information it needs up here. So this guy needs a little more information, a little extra information. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, let's just see what this window surrounds thing did. What did this, what did this do? Let me, let me do it this way. Let me set this here. And we'll sort of set this off to the side here. OK. So first of all, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the geometry punched. So if I just hook up a simple uh, BREP output to the envelope uh, geometry punched, what do we see here? Well, we see a bunch of BREP geometry with holes punched in it. Right? All the windows have been punched out. So for our purposes, when calculating shading factors, this is exactly the envelope geometry that we want to use. In addition to that, we also have the so-called window surrounds. The window surrounds are going to be just what they sound like, a bunch of, uh, a bunch of uh, inset uh, side and top and bottom surfaces for all of, our, all of our window elements there. And so obviously those are going to affect us when it comes to um, applying our shading. And if you want, for any reason, we also have the actual window surfaces themselves. So we have all the window surfaces, the window surrounds, and the punched envelope geometry. And um, uh, uh, let's see, I think it would make most sense if I do something like this so that you can really see it. So let's do this. Do it this way, and there, and there. Right, so now you can kind of see the, you can sort of see the shading more easily, right? So the window surfaces are actually pushed back in space. And we've got all these window surrounds all the way around the edges there. Now, OK, so first of all, isn't that going to screw up the ladybug model? Right? I was just saying, or I said in the previous video, we have to model those window surfaces in plane with the ladybug model. Uh, yes, true. This geometry here, this geometry that you see here being output by this component, is only used for the purpose of calculating shading. This is not actually part of the Ladybug, Honeybee, or Energy Plus model. This is a sort of um, uh, a mirror version, which has been created only for the purpose of calculating shading. And as soon as the shading calculation is complete, all of this geometry gets thrown away. So it might seem redundant, but uh, it gives you the most accurate method of calculating your shading factors. So this is going to create a bunch of duplicate geometry. As I said, it's going to be used to calculate the shading factors, and then it's going to get thrown out at the end, because obviously we still have to have our, our planar surfaces, um, our windows in plane with the surface when it comes to the actual Energy Plus model. All right, let's say, let's talk about one other thing. How, wh how, why did, why did it input, why did it push in the window this much? Where did this dimension come from? Well, that dimension is up to you to set. So for instance, if I turn my windows back on, do this, make it really, make it a little easier, wireframe. So that dimension is up to you to set. So for instance, if I come in here and I grab this window plane and I come into my Rhino scene, I go to the Passive House Tools ribbon and I go to the window parameters set box. Remember, we used this way a long time ago to set up our window components, framing and glazing and variant type. And we skipped right over it way back when, but we have the ability here to set the window install depth. So if I set that to something like 0 0.35 meters, say OK, that's going to all flow through. And as soon as that updates, let's force that to update over here. We'll set that's a first floor window. Uh, if we were using pipelines, that would auto auto update. But we can push that through and notice what just happened. Notice that that window has been pushed much further back in space now. Right, so using those tools, we can set that dimension. By default, it's going to use 100 millimeters or 4 inches as the setback. But you can obviously set that dimension to whatever you want. And you could do it one window at a time by going through and setting those up. Um, of course, you can also sort of batch control that for sure. 
So that's where that number comes from. That's where that inset comes from. That's how it's going to decide how to push it that far, that far back in space. Okay, so our geometry seems like it's pretty well set up at this point. Uh, again, this is all just like a copy. Uh, it's not, this is again, not being used for our, clean this up a little bit here. Um, it's not being used for our energy plus model. It is just a, just a copy. Okay, now we do need some other things to calculate our actual shading factors, though. Um, if we were to go look at the PHPP, we would see we would, we're still getting 75% shading factors. That's because we haven't run the solver, and we still need to input the latitude here. So let's talk about the latitude first. Let me come back to my grasshopper scene here. And how are we going to get the latitude? Well, by default, the latitude is set to 40 degrees. Again, very New York-centric, I know. Um, but if you want, you can input... Um, either a number, so I could input 65 degrees as a, as a number, if I, if I knew that that was the latitude. And then if I was to set this to true, if I just turn that on, this would go off and run the solver, right? That would be, that would be perfectly acceptable. Um, but there's another way we can do that. We can do that by using our, um, using our, some of our ladybug tools, uh, which, is, which is great. So if we were to, for instance, go over to ladybug and come to our ladybug import, and let's download an EPW weather file, and we will import, what do we want to do? Uh, deconstruct location. Yeah, there we go. And then we can get our latitude. Oh, I guess we need to because first we need to import the location. So we need to download the EPW web weather file. We need to get the location out of the EPW weather file. And then out of that, we can pull our latitude. And so that'll be our, that'll be our latitude. Okay. So that's fine, right? That's great, and we can just go off and grab any weather file URL that we want. Um, the easiest way to do that, of course, is to, whoops, is to, um, oh, that is what I wanted, is to just go to the EPW weather file map. Let me just boot that up. So when I set that to true, it's going to boot up my web browser here. And it's going to go to my Ladybug Tools EPW weather map. There we go. All right, and so if we zoom in on any location we want, I'm going to choose New York, just again, that's where I am, that's where I'm working, but you could choose whatever location you want. I'm going to come in here, and I like working with this JFK data set. This is an easy one, and all I have to do here is say copy link to clipboard, and then this is done, and all I have to do is just paste that link here, that weather file URL that's going to flow through here. It's going to download the EPW. The EPW is going to get opened up. Delete this. EPW is going to get opened up. The location is going to get pulled out. The location is going to flow through. Then we can pull the latitude out of our location. And what do we get for the JFK data set? 40 degrees. So that can then flow into our latitude. Now, again, I can just type in 40. I could look it up on a map. I could, you know, get this any number of different ways. Um, but this would be one way that we could use the native... Um, uh, ladybug tools to do that. And we'll see, especially as we shift gears and look at more sophisticated shading methods, we can use this EPW file for all sorts of different things. And so um, it, it's um, helpful to have it as part of our, our definition here. So it's good to, good to pull it in. Um, again, you can use whatever location you want. I'm going to use New York City, um, JFK, for our, um, for our example here. Right, so okay, so that latitude is pulling through, and it's going to flow into our latitude input here. And in order for this to work, all we have to do is go ahead and set this to true. So that'll go off and work for a second, and nothing looks like it happened, but it did. Behind the scenes, this did a bunch of stuff. And what do we get as output? I don't think we get any... Yeah, we get no, no output if it's all working well. We get our second floor and first floor honeybee rooms. But a bunch of information has been added to those rooms. So for instance, if I took this honeybee rooms and passed it, I made this way too big, I'm going to move this over, passed it to the next link in the chain, 
In this case, it happens to be our create ventilation system. I take these honeybee rooms, I pass them to the next link in the chain. These now modified honeybee rooms are now flowing out to our PHPP. So let's turn on our PHPP export and let's take a look at what our PHPP looks like now that we've made those modifications. And there we go, our PHPP. Let's take a look, what do we get? There we go. So what do we have now? Notice our shading factors are no longer flowing through. So we're no longer getting those 75% reduction factors. Instead, what are we getting? We're getting a bunch of dimensional information for things like the window depth reveal, the distance from the edge of the reveal to the glazing, the overhang depth, the distance from the upper edge of the glazing to the overhang. All of this stuff is flowing through automatically into our PHPP based on our geometry back in our Rhino scene. And all of this information is then being used to calculate a series of shading factors for the PHPP. So over here, notice we have our total shading factor for the heating case. Here we've got our total shading factor for the cooling case. And notice they're actually quite a bit higher than 75%. So 75% was, uh, you know, not too far off, but uh, many of the shading factors that are being calculated now are quite a bit, quite a bit higher. Although we don't have much in the way of shading objects in our scene. Let's go back to our grasshopper for a second here. So right now, the only things that are being taken into account are the envelope elements themselves. We can see and pull this over. We can see exactly what the solver here is finding if we output these check lines. So the check lines are included here just so that you can visualize. I'm going to hook up just a regular curve component the, so that you can visualize where the shaving, shading solver is finding intersection events. So first of all, we get a bunch of crazy horizontal lines. What are those? Well, that's the horizon shading tester. It's going out to 99 meters in every direction, and it's looking for shading objects. We don't, we don't have any other objects in our scene, so it's not finding anything. But if we zoom in on one of the windows here, notice we do have some of these little side reveal check lines, and we've got some overhang check lines, which are projecting out from the edge of the glazing out and finding shading objects. And so you can see here which objects are being found by this shading solver. And so all of those dimensions then, so the intersections are being found, and then all those dimensions are flowing through into our PHPP, into our shading worksheet, into this section right here. Go back to our grasshopper for a second. So couple things about that. Obviously, uh, the depth of the reveal is going to matter a lot. The um, thickness of the frame is going to matter a lot. So the, the point that we start measuring from is the edge of the frame. So the thickness of the frame matters. Uh, and then obviously, the, uh, the depth of the um, depth of the reveal matters. We should also talk about how we deal with these mold windows because in fact there is no reveal at this at this sort of midpoint here. So we'll talk about how we sort of manage that. And then um, maybe in the next one we'll come back and sort of um, dial in the shading here a little bit. We'll talk about adding additional shading elements like the roof overhang. Um, and maybe we'll add some more um, elements out in the scene there to, to add some detail to our to our shading. But in general, that's the sort of basic idea for how to use the simple shading factor uh, solver here. Um, as I said, we'll come back in, and I think in the next video, we'll take a look at adding some detail and refining this solution a little bit. And then in the future, we'll come back and take a look at a whole alternate method for calculating shading. We'll look at using some of the ladybug radiation solver tools for calculating shading factors.